All right. You are here with Genuine Jeff. This is the Discover Yourself podcast, episode two. Today, we have our first guest, Taylor Woo! Brooke from Ohio University. Taylor, how about you get us started? You know, here on this podcast, the whole goal, the mission is to bring people up on here who are doing wonderful things with their life, who are living out their dreams in authentic ways. And why don't you just first start telling our audience a little bit about yourself, what it is you love to do, and just start telling us a little about what makes you, you. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me, Jeff. I think this is awesome that you're doing these interviews. Um, I'm a senior at Ohio University. My major is broadcast journalism. I'm getting a minor in marketing in Spanish just because I'd like to have backups, I guess. But my main thing is I want to be a news anchor slash just like tell stories. So right now I have my own YouTube that it's called Tay Talks. Tay Talks, everybody. <laughs> Check it out. It stands for Totally Authentically You. And this mainly stems because I identify within the LGBTQ community. And for a long time, like I've struggled with accepting for uh, who I am, et cetera. But now that I'm a senior and I just, I'm just, I want to be my totally authentic self in life. Like why hide who you are? So what I do with this channel on YouTube is I find people that have been through hard hardships and struggles, interview them, see how they overcame them slash like are currently overcoming them and just find out how they became like the awesome people that they are today. So I've interviewed probably around like five people so far and it's still continuing on. I also talk about just my experiences with being like, you know, I identify as gay, but slash like I don't like labels because I feel like you can kind of fall in love with whoever. But that's yep. besides the point. You know, I just try to be a totally authentically me and interview other people that are doing awesome things and being totally authentically themselves as well. I love it. I love it, Taylor. Y'all, you'll have to check her out. Her social media is Taylor Brook. Usually Taylor Brook or Tay Brook. Yeah, probably. Usually Taylor Brock on every, everything. Also, links will be in the podcast for all that information. Follow her. Check her out. She's doing wonderful things. But the question I want to start off with is, sure. where did this vision kind of come from of what you wanted to do, um, being in the TV industry? Like, kind of where, where did that dream come from? So, growing up, I would always watch TV with my mom, and I would see, you know, you watch The Voice, and you watch Ninja Warriors, and everything like that, and you watch the news, and I just liked presenting. I liked being up there. I didn't know how to get there. I'm like, Mom, what do I do? What do, I major, what do I major in in order to become <laughs> those people? And we just kind of settled on like journalism because broadcast journalism, broadcast TV, that's how I get there. So I used to be a really shy person actually. Like I was really, really, really shy, which <laughs> is really weird because I'm very outgoing now. But I just like being in front of others. I used to do a little bit of modeling and acting. I just like entertaining people, getting to know them. I love interviewing and asking questions. So just all my interests. I want to do something in life that I'm passionate about and love. I don't want to go to work and hate my job because what's the point? You're not living out a fulfilled life if you do that. Yep. So I've, we settled on journalism and now I'm very happy. That's amazing. So a lot of people have probably been in that spot where, you know, they have those dreams when they're a kid. They, they, have, they tap into a little bit of what they want to do. What really helped you live that out rather than just kind of letting it stay in that marination stage in your mind? Well, what I like to do is I just like to dive into things. So when I figured out journalism, then I immediately was looking for what would, what's the best school that's, you know, in a good price range, I guess, that I can go to. And that is Ohio University. It's one of the top 10, I guess, in the nation, or at least it used to be, but it's still a really, really awesome school. Yes. So I figured it's I should wonderful. probably go there, probably go to Ohio University. I live in Ohio. Makes sense money-wise. Makes sense because it's one of the best journalism schools. And then since that day, I stepped into the Scripps School of Journalism, like I just hit the ground running. Like I wanted to get involved in as many things as I possibly could, um, get involved in the TV station, just try things out. Because, yeah, you think you know if you like something, but unless you really try it, you're not 100% sure. So you're I not sure. It's dove a, into everything. It's a process of elimination. Yeah. How, do you, how do you start to just weed through what doesn't work? It's just as important. Yeah. I love that you highlighted that there. Um, Within, you know, you're actively pursuing so much within journalism and two of your two of your big highlights were being on the Today Show for New York City and L.A. Yep. Was that? T tell us a little bit about that, because that just seems like such a surreal experience and maybe give give our audience a little bit of insight on steps that you took, like maybe two or three of the biggest steps that helped you secure those secure those experiences, lock yeah. them in and find them. All right. So. Everyone I feel like who's a journalism major at Ohio University knows about the Today Show internship. I think that we've had a strong connection with them for a while. So as a freshman, I knew about that. So it was on the radar. Immediately, I was like, that's my goal. I want to get a really good internship, but like the Today Show's the one I want. <laughs> and you're scared because you're like, what if you don't get it? Like, do you, are you going to feel like you're a failure in college? But ideally, like, I, I wanted to go for the Today Show internship. 
So a couple of the older people that I knew just throughout WAB TV and other clubs within Ohio University, they have had the internship. So I would talk to them about how they got it. Pick their brains. They did. Yes. I would get into the studio and just try to learn how to edit, try to just learn as much as I could. Even though in classes later you learn how to do it, I wanted to learn like as a now. freshman. So I dove in, started networking with people that already had the internship, asked what they did, used their advice, and just dove in and learned as much as I could. And then I ended up applying like my sophomore year. Didn't get it because I hadn't had an internship at all at that point. Really? But I was like, what can I do now to help myself be, be-, be better, a, a better applicant for the, next, for the next year? So I ended up going to Wiz TV, which is in Zanesville. Okay. I had a Friday's off. I forget what semester it was, but I had Fridays off. So I asked the news director, I was like, can I have like a mini internship and like come in on Fridays and just learn from you guys? And yeah, he said yes. I just want to point something out real quick. Her work ethic right there. A lot of people on Fridays having the Friday off, they'd want to just take the day <laughs> off. They'd want to just, you know, start their weekend Thursday night. And I'm guilty of it. I've been there. But I, I think mean, we all have. We, all, we have. all have. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, we all have. But I mean, just right there, that is one key key factor that just sets things aside. You know, if you have a day off, are you spending that day just kind of laying around, not doing a whole lot? Or are you are you creating massive action for yourself? Those those days are the days where you shorten the gap and the distance between where you are and where you want to be. So I love that. I just wanted to point oh, 100%. that out. hundred percent. Like I am the type of person where if I'm not doing something to pr- you know build progress. I'm like, I don't feel productive. I feel like I'm wasting my life, and I don't like that. So that's why I was like, I need to do something so that I, my next, when they look at my application the next year, what's different about it? Yep. So then I had the internship for that, and then I ended up getting the Today Show internship in New York City my fall semester of my junior year. And then after that, just built a lot of connections there, networked a lot, tried to stay in contact with a couple of producers, and then ended up applying for the, the summer internship in L.A., which no one from Ohio University has done yet. No one's ever, no one's wow. been in LA at the wow. Today Show. Wow, congratulations. I, I personally did not know that, Taylor. Congratulations. Thank That's you. amazing. That so really that kinda, is amazing. That kind of came out of nowhere because my sophomore year, I had, I had applied like through like the mass thing, so not even through the Ohio University program, mm-hmm. just through anybody, anybody. NBC Two Career. And <laughs> oh, it's wow. Like, it's called NBC Campus Two Careers, and it's through the whole entire um, like nation. Anyone can apply. Ended up getting a call back from one of the one of the produce, producers there, but I was studying abroad in Spain, so okay. couldn't do it. But stayed in contact. The main thing is like I stayed in contact with people, just here and there. Like, hey, I'm still interested. Maybe I'll apply next year. Like, keep me in keep mind. Keep the bridges alive. And then I emailed this this producer, and she ended up calling me back, and that's how I got the LA internship. Wow. Just maintaining a contact. So. What was that moment like? What was that? I'm just curious. Like, let us inside your head for a minute. What was that? I like just when really you wanted. I wanted to get another internship because again, I feel unproductive if I'm not doing something toward you know, to better myself toward my goal. And I got this email and I was like, first I thought it was something in New York because I had up, been Already applying to some be, other okay. things. But then I looked, I'm like, Universal City, California. Like, which one Which one is this? <laughs> and then I realized, I was like, oh my God, like this is the, this this is is the Today it. Show LA. Wow. So. <laughs> and then once you were on there, tell us a little bit. I think the projects you specifically worked on in your internship were extremely powerful. Um, let us in on that a little bit as well. Yeah, this actually, this summer was awesome because it like did it did a full circle with my Tay Talks thing, being totally authentically me, coming out. Got to out branch as, that out through it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, coming out as uh, in the LGBT community, and what happened was there was a producer who was working on a story about the f- how coming out has changed since the 50th anniversary of Stonewall Inn. Okay. And he was asking me like if I knew anybody that I could interview, like people my age. And I'm from Ohio, and I was in LA, so I was like, mm, I don't really know anybody, but I'm not I met here, some maybe. interns that might know some people because they went to UCLA, things like that. So I was like, let me ask around, and then I got really nervous because I was like, I identify within that community. Do I tell this producer that I am, and that if he wow. actually needed to interview me, he could? I didn't know if it would be a conflict of interest or not, but I just thought, you never know. So I worked up the courage, and he, like this producer actually was gay himself, so I felt a lot more comfortable telling him. But it was a huge step, and just. Because I'm every day coming out, every day working on, you know, working on being totally authentically me. It's still something I'm, you know, I struggle with. It's a consistent process. It's hard to tell people who you are. But I was like, I'm just going to do it. My whole concept now is being totally authentically me. So I told him. And then the next day he's like, you know what? I wonder if I could actually interview you. And then I was like, what? (laughs) If you really actually need me, I will do it. And so I ended up being interviewed for a segment on the Today Show, and it aired. So essentially, I came out on national television. Wow. And that was a huge moment. So tell us a little bit about the emotions you felt like. What really helped you? Because I know your your mission is 
Pay talks, totally authentic you. What really allowed you to do that? Take those steps forward and move move forward with kind of coming out on on live live television like that. And then right. and also <laughs> your your one YouTube channel video I saw where you finally came out. Like I think it's just so beautiful. What helps you really be able to do that? Well, one thing is I feel like visibility is really important in life. So when you meet people, I think a lot of people assume about you know about anything really mm -hmm. but the majority of people that I meet don't ever think that I'm gay or you know within the LGBT community at all but I am and so my thing is visibility like if I can share my story with somebody and someone can relate to it or it helps them be able to come out because I'm also out or whatever like that's that's worth it for me so when I was there and I was nervous I was like well you know what there's so many other people in this world that are really nervous as well to come out because they're afraid that people don't accept them but if one person does it, then another person might have the confidence to do it as well. And that's what's really important to me. So as much as my heart beats when I want to tell people and things like that, I do it because you only have one life. And I feel like you really need to live it authentically. And that's, that's just my motto nowadays. It goes beyond you. You know, when yeah. it's so imp I love that you brought the idea of, you know, I'm really nervous, but this is to help other people around me. So exactly. for everybody listening out there, if you you feel any of these ways these emotions you feel trapped you feel a little locked in a little bit this is the place to tune in and open up figure out and learn some different ways that how you can just live yourself your authentic self every single day because you know there's the FOMO of wanting to miss out on everything people else like the societal norms but then there's the FOMO of missing out on your dream being your authentic self and living that daily um, so I really appreciate that, Taylor. That that was that's very powerful. Thank you. Um, so kind of we tailored off there with it, Taylor. Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> um, what is what really motivates you? Like, what is what is your drive to consistently produce content that inspires and educate those around you? What uh, what's a, what's a driving factor in you? Well, I feel like everyone has a voice. And so why not use your voice for good? Like, I love that you're doing these podcasts and you you genuinely, like, try to help people. I love the name Genuine Jeff. Like, <laughs> I watch your stuff. Watch his stuff on Instagram and everything. Like, he's he's really motivational. And so I love interviewing people. I love getting to know people's stories. And I feel like everyone has a hardship that they've gone through in life or something. You know, life is not perfect. Mm -hmm. So why not use those and learn from your hardships, learn from your struggles to make better? Like, how do people get over this stuff? Like, everyone's going through something. So I love getting to know people's stories and just seeing like how they became the amazing people that they are today. So really, I just feel like everyone has a voice and that I want to use it for good. Mm -hmm. I want to be in front of others. I want to entertain others and be, you know, a TV news anchor or a storyteller, things like that. So why not tell stories that are powerful? You know, like yes. we have one life. Let's help people out. That's that's just my. I love it. And, and you mentioned uh, you mentioned the voice, and I think the voice is a crazy thing. Like our each individual voice, like how powerful. A voice can be and how yeah. it can move you within your own mind within your soul a little bit it's like a little dance you just got to get along with it <laughs> <laughs> um all right let me see here um so taylor this is this is your time to shine whatever whatever it is you want what is what is one message maybe that you had in mind today that you really wanted to share with with your listeners out there just about anything Ooh, in general tough. You know, it could be just a little little personal motivation you have from yourself. Um, but, yeah, if you had just kind of one powerful message you wanted to drop out there. I feel like it would circle back to being totally authentically you. Like, my main thing is, like, I can give you a little bit about my story of me coming out, I think. Yeah, definitely. So that I didn't really great. even know until my senior year of high school. And I was like, I just had all these feelings. And I was like, why? I just, I needed to just explore and, and, and figure out my sexuality. Mm -hmm. So I ended up kind of realizing it like when I went to college that I was like all right probably bisexual or whatever and then it just it's it scares the shit out of you like excuse my friend but like it's no you're it's fine scary. it's is, a very scary real. thing to be like not within the societal norms and things like that like my f extended family is really catholic like they used to not really accept like the older gay people in my family everything is perfectly fine now because like if you want someone in your life who you love mm -hmm. you're gonna learn to accept them but for a while everyone you know has these ideas that homosexuality is bad, et cetera, Extreme et cetera. right, extreme wrong. Exactly. So in this day and age, it's a lot more safer to come out, especially where I live and like the family that I have. I have a very blessed family, but it's still really, really scary. So it's a process for me still to be able to come out and tell people and things like that, but it is a journey. So anyone that's going through struggles of like, they don't know, 
obviously assess the situation. Like if you are not comfortable coming out yet or your parents don't think they'll accept, like obviously take that time and, and go slow. Mm-hmm. For me, I knew that my parents would ideally accept me. It's more of like a, my thing, like when I'm ready to say it. But I would just say if anyone's having thoughts or feelings of you don't know who you are, like don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to tell like your best friend or somebody. Like most of the time, most people are really accepting and really appreciate you telling them. People I love are that. deathly scared of, of saying things, <laughs> but like the, once you take that first step, it's a journey and it's a process and it's going to get better. And then here I am today still, you know, I don't tell everybody, but still on the journey. I'm trying to be more open about it and just, you know, have that visibility and help people out because a lot of people are struggling. I love that. No, it's so, it's so real. And, you know, even I think this is just a good lesson applicable to anything in life, you know whether you're in the LGBTQ community, whether it's just a dream you have that might be out of the societal norm, if you want to play the trombone with little Billy down the street, exactly. go ahead, go exactly. ahead. That's the thing. I care way too much about what people think of me. Let's and that's talk one about that thing that I'm literally, yeah, that's, I'm, it's hard to say like, oh, I don't care what they think. Cause I do every day. You're e- like, everybody, I think it's in our being. Yes. It's how we interact. Yes. So how do you overcome that? I still don't know, but <laughs> I'm just trying to work on like, I am who I am, and people are going to like me for who I am. Like, I just try to be the best version of myself that I can be. I try to be the kindest person that I can be, the nicest person. And if someone doesn't like that, then you know what? They're not meant to be in my life, really, because I'm trying to be the best, most genuine, nicest self that I am. How did you come to that realization? Because I have, I have too, and sometimes when I tell people that, it's sometimes difficult because they're like, what do you mean they're just not going to be in your life anymore? Right. You know, how do you sometimes – take like really hit home and get people to understand that message it's just hard but why do you, why would you ever want to feel any sense of like negativity within yourself or with others like you want to be your most genuine self and you want to hang out with people that are going to bring out your best self yes. rather than bring you down like any person that makes you feel uncomfortable or just that you have to change for them or you know they're judging you or things like that that those people are not meant to be in your life because they're not doing anything for you. No. You know? They're and not bettering you in any way. And, and it might be hard because I had somebody reach out to me once and say, you know, what if it's somebody who's been in your life potentially your whole life? It's a lifelong best friend who's – Or a, pa- yeah, or a parent, parent, you know? Anybody. Like it's, it's really difficult to create that separation or, you know, kind of just let go, mm-hmm. you know? But we got to realize that when we're holding on, we're causing ourselves so much more pain and trauma and – it's not easy to let go. I'm not here to say it's easy. Not at all. Not it's you know it's probably one of the hardest things to do sometimes, and it's letting go in itself. I read in a book is a process. It's a daily commitment to let go of something. It's not just like, all right, today I'm dropping this forever. It's gone. It's a, it's a daily commitment. Right. Um, you know, who cares about what other people think? You got to be you and just have fun doing it. Because at the end of the day, I think there's nothing more fulfilling than when you live out what it is your calling is, you know, like 100%. you get lost in your work. I'm not sure about you, but how do you like, how do you feel when you're really gripped and engaged with your work? Like, like what's that experience like for you? I mean, I feel like, like, you know, editing is a very long process. It's tedious. We have to do everything ourselves, especially in the beginning of your career. But then you have to th- sit back and think like, is it worth it? Are people going to resonate with this? Are they going to comment saying, thank you so much for doing this? Like I really, I, I really needed to see this video or hear this message, things like that. That's what's worth it for me, like all the hours editing and filming and doing everything yourself. Editing is a wild world of work, too, because, like, you'll be messing with something for so long, and you're like, am I making a difference? And a couple hours goes <laughs> by, and, like, you look at the original, you look where you're at now, and it's yep. it's really a fun process. But it's worth it. It is. It is. Oh. And it's <clears> – <throat> I think it teaches great patience, personally. Mm-hmm. I have a lot – I definitely get pretty angry with technology and editing sometimes, but hey, it's just one of those things you got to work through. You got to work through exactly. it. Exactly. So one more thing I wanted to mention actually yeah, was for sure. with my message. I know I keep saying this, but like you really do only have like one life. That's like the main thing. I This is kind of weird, but I feel like every time I go to a funeral or things like that, it's like, why are you not being your authentic self? You know, like this is, people are going to die eventually. And time like literally flies. Like I'm already 21 years old doesn't feel like it like time flew by so I don't want to I don't want to look back on my life in 10 years and be like why didn't I come out earlier like why didn't I start these podcasts earlier like I know people feel like sometimes I feel like people are going to judge me if I do Instagram stories or if I start making YouTube videos talking about things that are kind of weird like I don't want to feel like people are judging me Mm -hmm. but it's like in the end 
you're going to be out of college and you're probably not going to see half these people anyway. Right. But the real ones that are going to stand beside you are the ones that are going to be in your life. So why do I care what the other people think about? You know what I mean? And you got to do what you want to do in life. It's it frust I get frustrated because I'm sitting there and I'm like about to post something. <laughs> and then all those thoughts start coming in like, oh, what? What's little Susie on the corner going to think? And I'm like, right. I'm like, why? Like, this person doesn't even know I exist. I literally just know their face through a social media account, and I'm worried about them. Right. Like, it just seems comical when you start to put it into perspective. And, um, like, why let that one voice be what stops you from living out your dream? And, you know, like, maybe you can tell me how you relate to this. When I first wanted to post a video, I had that same thing. I was like, what the hell is going to happen? Everyone's going to judge me. Right. People are going to think I'm crazy. Like going like this is a whole side of me they've never seen before. But my biggest tip I could I could give is consistency with it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be people who are like, oh, what the hell is going on? But I mean, once they see that you truly care, because if it's something you love, you will. Mm -hmm. That's the game changer. It's and then you'll honestly start to see a lot of people will, will appreciate what you do. You know, right. you'll have people reach out to you who you've never known have been listening, tuning in, and you're making a difference and in their life. that's the best. That's the best because that's when it's worth it. You're right? Like, people are listening. <laughs> people are watching even though you don't feel like they are or anything like that. And a lot of people are going to be haters on the, you know, when you first start because they're like, oh, he's never going to go anywhere. She's never going to go anywhere. Blah, 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 they blah. Just they just want to stamp it down. down. But then when you make it eventually, it's not even about making it, but then when you make a difference in the world, it's like, wow. You w They're like, oh. Shit. Right. I should <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. They were on that train. They were on the right train. Yeah. You know, there's no right or wrong path to life, should I say? But it's just it's just knowing your path, baby. That's the right. key. Right. Being you, it's just, just doing you. You have to do what you want in life. Totally authentically yourself. It's what we have to be here just every day and it's not easy. It's not you know, it's not simple. No. It's a journey. It's it's a lifelong journey and these things that we talk about like living our dream getting to these points, you know It's it's not like at 40. It just stops or at 50 or 60 like this is these are things We're always gonna be doing until until we die until we mm -hmm. until whatever happens then but I'm not sure but I mean this is just something that We can't get fixed on the end goal because the end goal is such a finite line in the spectrum of time and that's how we got to start now like don't wait till you're 40 or 50 and mm -hmm. have a lot of confidence because you are more mature and you have a more of an established life and maybe some money things like that do what you want to do now do what you're passionate about that way you live a fulfilled life don't wait because then what, the what happened with those 20 years you're just going to be like looking back regretting them and i don't want to regret like i don't want to regret anything in life yeah it, regret is really scary like you i watch uh, like motivational videos where like they talk about the worst thing to potentially experience is getting to your deathbed and just realizing everything you could have and should have and would have done. Yeah. Like I just don't want to feel that way. And if I have to sacrifice my own comfortability of not fitting into a societal norm to do that, well, that's a damn, you know, I don't even think it's a sacrifice. I think it's an investment. So I was looking up what a sacrifice means by definition. I'm big with words. Sacrifice yeah. is like the slaughtering of an animal for something <laughs> higher. And we use that word so much in society, like, oh, I'm sacrificing my night out to do the, to work on school. It's like, is it really a sacrifice? Wow. Or, or is it an investment? Is it an investment with your time, energy? It's not a sacrifice. Unless I see you with a little slaughtered pig over your head <laughs> or a little chicken, <laughs> you know, it's not, a, it's not a sacrifice. What some these things we talk about, they're investments within yourself in the world around you investments in other people investments <sighs> for your future you're right i love that word yeah that's a really good word to use it's it's words are powerful yeah. words are, words are wild no one ever say sacrifice again <laughs> <laughs> it's out of the <laughs> dictionary we're taking it out <laughs> we're taking it out well any any last final thoughts that you might have for us today if anyone wants to come talk to me on my on my YouTube channel, please check her That'd out. Awesome. Tay Tay Talks. She has a website as well. We're gonna drop everything, every way you can get in contact with her. If you relate to her story in any way, and you want to just reach out, connect with her, pick her brain on how she went through her journey of becoming who she is today. Wonderful Tay. Literally, if you just want to talk to me about anything, yes. If you want to go come on my channel and and speak about you know hardship you've overcome, I literally have. I mean, I, I interview people of all different sorts of, with, who have had all different sorts of struggles. 
What is, so. here, we'll actually, real quick before, yeah. I know we were kind of r- closing up, but we'll, we'll open this book back up. <laughs> what is uh, one of, like, a really powerful interview you had, you've had with somebody? Or you know what? One that really sticks out to my, in my mind is I interviewed my, one of my best friends from high school. And she suffered from really, really bad anorexia to the point where her heart almost stopped. Wow. And I witnessed it firsthand because I went to high school with her. And we've just become so much more closer over time. And she's literally the funniest person I've ever met in my entire life. Like, this woman just... <laughs> exuberate <laughs> just positivity funniness like she's just an all-around awesome human being so i got to interview her and she opened up about her struggles through high school stuff that i like witnessed but i'd never heard her speak about wow and so that was just really really powerful and i actually live with her now so wow that was really cool and then just other things like i've interviewed a non-binary person and just talked about you know what that term means just trying to educate others because unless someone knows somebody you don't really think about it you don't care about it but i want everyone to just open up and be more inclusive and, and accepting of others. And so that's another goal of the Tay Talks is just educating people. It's it's so powerful because I think we do get really accustomed to just categorizing people. Oh, this, they're this cover, they're this cover. It's like, that's a book mm-hmm. in a sense. Like that person's a story with so much more than just that label that we like to slap on people. So I, I yeah. love that. I love that you're doing that. Thank you. Um, oh, there's another thought with that. It's just drifting away. Drifting <laughs> away. <laughs> I love, oh, that's what I was going to say. I love that, I love that you're also using your your skills, your power to, to let others kind of open up and be themselves, like mm-hmm. live. Like, I just think that's really powerful. Everything you do, Taylor, I really just, best of luck moving in the forward. I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't even say luck. You're just going to kill it. I know it. <laughs> so I know are it. you, Jeff. <laughs> so are you. I love it. You got to get you got to hype those around you up. It's just how it works. It goes back to what we talked about before. People who fan your flame, not piss on it, as Will Smith might say, (laughs) you know, people who fan your flame, fan your fire. It's so important. Um, But I know Taylor's got class here soon, so we're going to wrap this up. I really appreciate you coming on to the Genuine Jeff podcast. I am honored to be the first interview. I'm like, this is first interview. She killed it, everyone. She (laughs) killed it. But we're going to have more to come. We're going to just be bringing on more people who want to share their stories. You know, Taylor talked about her story of how, you know, some of her powerful accomplishments getting onto the Today Show, coming out and being an advocate for the LGBTQ community. Very powerful stuff we just we just dove into here. You know, if you really enjoyed anything on here, time like mark the time, drop it in the comments, let us know. I can even make some other videos diving more into it if you want some lessons. Taylor has her own YouTube channel. She can do the same. Um, But thank you again, Taylor, for this. We'll be back next week diving in, sharing more stories, showing people just how we can do this. This rocks a little while. Any any last thoughts? I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you again for tuning in, everybody. everybody. Be you. (laughs) Have a great one. Let's get it this Monday.